Now, as I promised, we'll talk now more about David Bowie and his influence. Let's bring in Jack Stephen. He is director of Fortune Music. It's, and it's actually Fortress Music. Fortress, Fortress Music. Fortress, yes. Do beg know, your pardon, Jack. Mind. Fortress Music and worked as a music in the music industry uh, as an executive in the Bowie era and also uh, Bowie's fashion sense we're going to talk about as well. It's influenced uh, the era. And Lizzie Zeta, fashion stylist, Hi. is with. Welcome to you both. Apologies again, no Jack. Problem. I mean, but perhaps first sum up how, how you felt this morning when you when you heard this I, I was just saying earlier that I actually felt that part of me had died I mean I have to say that that's how much an influence he is I think to me and hey everybody it's Krusty Christopherson coming at you live from our studio how's it going folks well it appears Lazarus has risen early yeah uh, didn't take three days it only took one day here's a video somebody sent me the link to this this is uh, Sky News. Uh, it's on this channel called Fortress Music, who has one video. And uh, this guy's name right here is supposedly Jack Stephen. And he's on here. He's a uh, music industry executive of uh, Fortress Music. And uh, he's commenting on uh, the death of David Bowie, who supposedly died on January 10th, 2016. And this is one day later. So Lazarus has risen from the dead. He's making his first public appearance, I would imagine, and uh, coming on here and uh, uh, doing a uh, – here's my uh, comment. David Bowie coming on his own hoax death. FDF off. Uh, he's doing his uh, own uh, – Funeral, so to speak, uh, before it even happens. On here, talking about how how great David Bowie was, and uh, how he just says uh, it's, it's like a part of him died when David Bowie passed, and uh, how how much truer can that be? Unless this guy is a uh, doppelganger or a twin of David Bowie. I mean, what what other explanation there can there be than this guy being on here talking about David Bowie's death? <laughs> Quiet, dog. To thousands and millions of people around the world, and, and strangely, I I'm surprised. You know, I you know I sort of lived through John Lennon's death, uh, you know Elvis's death, and sadly this one's affected me more than any other. I mean, it's a very strange thing because I think with him he was probably the first complete artist. And if you look at his teeth, I'm trying to get a, a shot of his teeth. He's got the big fake teeth, just like Bowie had where he was involved in every single area of his career, whether it's photography, fashion, whether it was film, whether it was poetry, whether it was, uh, you know, uh, uh, live work where he was very theatrical. You know, I mean, his, his vocal influence, a lot of people don't know this, came from Anthony Newley, who, of course, was a musical, uh, you know, musical artist. So, so you know, I, I find it very, very sad today. People today talk about how he reinvented... See the tongue-in-cheek? Very, very sad today. <laughs> how how he, he went with the times. But he, he led the times in so many aspects through the 70s, 80s, 90s. He wasn't, he, he wasn't frightened of change. Mm. And so to him, every album was a different persona. And, and so he loved doing that. You know, so, you know, one point he had Ziggy Stardust, next point he had El Ed Insane. You know, and he wasn't frightened of, uh, of um, plagiarism either. I mean, you know, he, you know he, he used, you know, for example, the Hunky Dory photograph on the album was, was actually based on Marlene Dietrich. And, and so he wasn't frightened where he did, you know, where he used his influence from. I mean, he was, he was hugely influential with me because I, I, I was A&R at RCA when he was sort of to the tail end of that. And I signed a band there called the Eurythmics, which I was having <laughs> terrible problems with. I mean, really, yeah, well, nobody liked them at the label. I mean, promotion didn't like them, press didn't like them. I mean, nobody did. My, my boss didn't really like them. He kept telling me that they were weird. And there was an artist liaison guy there called Tony McGrogan who sort of came up to my office, grabbed me, and said, look, Bowie wants to meet up with you. Bring the tapes. So I brought, I always remember this, I brought The Walk and Love is a Stranger. And I sat with them and I played them to him and he thought they were absolutely wow. fantastic. And then, uh, you know, and then he's, you know, I mean, his words to me were very much, if you believe in it, fight for it. Because I have, I mean, that's what he said to me, and so I did, and it became hugely successful. And when the album went top five, I got a telegram from him saying, "Thank God, there's finally an A and R man with ears at RCA. Shame I've gone to EMI." <laughs> there's the big teeth. 
And you can see they're, they're scrambling this picture in this video. I guess they don't want you to make too close of a comparison of the faces between Bowie and this, this Joker who calls himself Jack Stevens. And, of course, Jack is just another name for the devil or Nimrod. Jack, Satan, Saturn, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him. Uh, Black Jack. Uh, uh, and this guy... Uh, was a uh, follower of Aleister Crowley, and he said, why, why should people have an ordinary death? So obviously this guy wants to go out in spectacular fashion, hoaxed his own death, and now he comes out the next day and does a video uh, giving, it, giving his own obituary. Here's this guy says, uh, F me, Bowie, the crisis actor, talking about himself. He worshipped Aleister Crowley, who was quoted as saying, ordinary mortality is only for ordinary people. There haven't been... Uh, there haven't been uh, public photos of Bowie posts in the last six years. People can change their appearance, appearance tremendously in six years. So just about everybody commenting on here believes it's uh, David Bowie and uh, selling his own death. Uh, oh, my God, doppelganger. <laughs> uh, he looks like David Bowie. They give you a clue. Doesn't it mean it's not robbery or fraud? Yeah, they, 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 they told you they coded this story. I told you it was coded seven seven seven. Alistair Crowley's number uh, to let you know that this was all uh, faked and uh, just like all the other fake news stories, they always use that number in there. They put, they cast a spell with it and uh, put you in the maze. And that's what his big movie was, the Labyrinth of uh, Pan Labyrinth. And uh, of course. Uh, Pan would just be another name for Nimrod, who's the uh, the little uh, horn god of the Freemasons. And obviously this guy is uh, totally up to his uh, eyeballs in, uh, in, in this uh, craft they call Freemasonry. And uh, they always want to worship and sell you death. And this is no different. And I'm not going to play this whole video. I'll leave a link to this if you want to watch it. But... Uh, there's the date this was published, and uh, supposedly Bowie died on January 10th. So, uh, Lazarus has risen. All hail uh, Ziggy Stardust, reborn as Jack Stevens. All right, folks. Krusty Christopherson, signing out. You take care. <laughs> Fine. Um, we'll talk about him as a man because actually okay. showing that he was funny. He was very funny, yeah. Bye-bye.